I'd like to bring your attention to one particular passage of scripture that will really make you seriously consider your future. This is one of the most important warnings we're given in the Bible. It's one of the most significant revelations that I have personally come across. And so the Bible reads in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7, But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. The first thing that stands out is that Peter says, the end of all things, all things, is at hand, meaning that it's near. It's at the doorstep. We are on the brink, so to speak. Now, that should immediately get your attention because Peter goes on to say, be serious and watchful in your prayer. Now, when the Bible is telling you to be serious, I believe it's saying, be sound-minded and self-controlled. Be serious in your relationship with God. Be faithful to the Lord and be serious about living a righteous life because the end of all things is at hand. Now, what's interesting is that Peter tells us to be serious and watchful in your prayers. This tells me that there has to be something to be gained from praying. There has to be something valuable that you can acquire in prayer if we are called to be serious and watchful in prayer. So let me ask you, in these times that we are living in, how's your prayer life? In these times where we hear of wars and rumors of wars, how's your prayer life? In these times where God is being removed from society, from institutions, from schools, how is your prayer life? In a time where many are turning away from the faith, how is your prayer life? Is your prayer life still strong? Is your prayer life forceful and tenacious? Have you ever asked the question, are we living in the last days? It's a question that has been at the forefront of many conversations in light of recent events. But rather than look at each and every event that is currently happening in the world, my message to you is that you should make sure that you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Yes, it's good for us to take note of the events happening in this world, but the focus for our lives should be to make sure that our individual relationships with God are in good standing. That's not to say we shouldn't be aware of the signs of the times. Now the Bible in 2 Timothy 3 warns us that perilous times will come. The world will become unthankful, unholy, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, among so many other things. So yes, we should be aware of these things, but I encourage you to focus on the passage of Scripture in Matthew 7, verse 21 to 23, which says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Now, whether these are the last days or not, whether this is the 11th hour or not, you and I as believers need to make sure that our focus is only on Jesus Christ. We should focus on the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, and that is Jesus Christ, who explicitly said, no one comes to the Father except through me. You and I need to make sure that we are not found to be the people stated in Matthew 7, verse 22, where the Bible says, Many will say to me on that day, Lord, 
Lord? Did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name drive out demons? And in your name perform many miracles? So rather than look at each and everything happening in the world and focusing your time and energy with a checklist of all of the signs of the times, I encourage you to focus your time and energy on seeking God. That should be our sole focus, to know Jesus Christ, to pray and to get to know him more to have a right relationship with Jesus Christ so that when we stand before him, we will hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. One of my most favorite accounts from the Bible is the life of Joseph. And if we actually take a moment and look at Joseph's life, we can learn a thing or two about the way the Lord orchestrates events and situations in our lives. At a young age, Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers. He was sold into a strange land where he was alone. And now at this time for Joseph, there was no mother. There was no father, no family, no inheritance. But deep down in his heart, Joseph believed that God was working out something good, something that would enable him to fulfill his calling and his purpose. So, He continued serving his Egyptian master faithfully, with the fear of God still embedded in him. And at the point when it seemed Joseph was getting settled and comfortable in his master's house, he was thrown into prison. He was placed there because of Potiphar's wife's allegation. Poor Joseph, you could say. But God. God, in his divine planning, was setting him up for his purpose. Now, at some point in life, you might be thrown out of your comfort zone. You might find yourself in a place where there is no mother, no father, no family to back you up or stand with you. But deep down in your heart, can you still believe that God is working something out for your good? The point I'm trying to make is that when you face bad situations, when you face difficulties, maybe... Just maybe, the mountain that you're facing is actually a stepping stone to your greatness. You see, God works in ways that we may not understand. Isaiah 55 verses 8 through 9 say, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So Joseph went through all of those challenges, all of those obstacles, and all that heartache. But it was all God's plan. You see, his steps were ordered. That means everything good and everything bad was ordered. From being a prisoner all the way up to being second in command to the king. So, it does not matter how long the challenge exists. God is faithful, and He will not allow a test that you cannot overcome. He will make a way of escape for you to be able to overcome that challenge. Listen, the Bible never said that because we are Christians, no trial or challenge will come our way. Rather, It says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him from them all. 1 Peter 4, verses 12 through 13 says, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. In short, we're told to expect trials. Don't look at them like they're strange happenings. And we're also not to judge God's love for us by the things that happen or don't happen in our lives. 
the thing we have to guard ourselves against is questioning the love of God. His love is constant. His love is everlasting. And so, beloved, the God we serve is one who turns things around for the good of those who love and trust Him. We serve a God that turns threat to triumph and despair into joy.